Annette Carlstrom and Reverend Howard Caesar. We're in uh, Houston, Texas, and Annette is in from Sweden visiting. And we've been talking for days and days about different aspects of living an awakened life. So let's get into one of the more uh, fun things that people have been questioning about is the mind and how you really live in the awakened life utilizing the mind. Hmm. Yes, the mind, you know, oftentimes we think that the mind, that it's our mind, that it's something that is like generated from our brains, the thoughts are coming from my brain, they're completely unique to me, it appears like that, because the brain is more of a processing machine, it's more of a, you know, electrical energy is moving through your forehead and out, if you were to look at it like in a mystical way. If you realize that, if you get an experience of that, that these thoughts are just passing through, being processed by my brain, and being caught up, the thoughts like you shared this morning in, in the service, the thoughts are just coming and going. It's the feelings that connect with them that gives us problems. So if there are some thoughts coming through you, and they are connected into a feeling, a negative feeling that is bothering you, that would be something you could get stuck in, and that would be the mind then is holding your consciousness. So what we learn and what we teach and what we live in the awakening process is not to be involved in it, but to be in awareness of it. And I usually, we like stories, right? Yes, we tell right. stories. So I will have- Tell me a story. <laughs> tell me a story. <laughs> so I like, I like animals, chickens and farms, right? I don't mm -hmm. know why, but it's very good to show this little story. like. How I do it, if there's something that is really uncomfortable, you just sit like you were a chicken on an egg, you know? The chicken mom, the hen, okay. would just sit there and wait until it hatched. So if you were to, instead of running away from it, you were to just stay with it, like that hen is sitting on the egg, mm -hmm. something in it cracks, it opens up, and something beautiful would come out of it. This is something you have to try for yourself but not running away from it or expecting like something good will come out of it like a, like a mother hen that would be a good story well now i'm a rooster so <laughs> i don't sit on eggs <laughs> oh, but but your analogy for it works okay. it works i'm with you um you know uh it's again the idea that um, most of our suffering comes not necessarily from a thought but from the feelings and emotions that are buried uh that are triggered by a thought um, and it uh, reminds me of a story, and it has to do with somebody in, um, in my first ministry. There was a lady that had moved there, and uh, she'd moved there about six or months or a year, and found our church, and, but when I met her, she, she could not turn her head. Her head was one way, and so when she would talk to you, it was sort of out of one eye. So it was very stiff, and her head kept turning more and more, she said, as time went on. So, <coughs> so she went to the different doctors, and. Nobody could figure out what it was, and finally one of the doctors recommended a, a psychologist physician that was very highly thought of and, you know, in this mind-body connection. Uh, he talked with her at great length, and, it, and they discovered that basically it, it, it took her back to the time when, not too long ago, that she had gone through a divorce. It was very, very painful, and it left her. She had to run a business on her own. She didn't have any reserves in money. It was hurtful and, and embarrassing. Uh, she didn't want the divorce. It was a surprise. So she buried all that pain, and she said later that she was afraid really to address it. It might overwhelm her. She wouldn't know how to handle it. It's back to kind of the survival right. mode. Either, you know, we have this physical survival mode, and we have the psychological mm -hmm. survival mode. But anyway, he was able to um, uh, have her experience through that pain and, um, and then break it up and release it and kind of empty the energies that were holding it in place. And she came back elated because she could now straighten her head and, uh, and the condition really never came back. I knew her the next six years that I um, served in that ministry. And it just goes to show you really the impact that the mind can have mm -hmm. uh, even on your physiological body and the right. signals. Yes. that the body is trying to give you right. in terms of facing yes. that which you are afraid to face. Yes, that's so. beautiful.